So, uh, hello everybody, I'm Daniela Ferretti, PhD student uh, here at the Max Planck Institute uh, in, at Cox Club. And uh, in this tutorial, we continue the tutorial that Francisca already started. But uh, before to do that, uh, I would like to spend a little, some minutes uh, no, to show you how to import uh, um, the protein groups for data set that are uh, um, quantified as LFQ quantification and uh, STMT. I would like to do that because we saw that um, there are many questions about that. So maybe it's better to spend uh, exactly a few times, a few minutes uh, uh, on it. So now what I will do is that upload an example of LFQ quantification. And uh, what you can see differently from uh, um, what you can see uh, differently uh, from a select quantification is that you will have here intensity LF and LFQ intensity and here in numerical section, another intensity, which are the difference. So the LFQ intensity are the uh, normalized uh, intensity based on the max uh, LFQ. And uh, it's where, uh, if you checked during the uh, max quant uh, process, it's where you will see the effect of the match between runs, so M MBR. The intensity are just simply the intensity that are not normalized. And the intensity here, uh, the numerical, is the sum of this intensity. So it means that if, for example, you, had, uh, you have in your data set just one only set of experiments, so let's say this one, sample A dot uh, underscore one, if you have only this one here, it means that uh, this one is the sum of only this one, so they will be the same. In this case, not because you have many, so this one intensity is the sum of all of this. Uh, all of this. So what you need to import when you do uh, LFQ quantification is uh, uh, LFQ intensity and intensity. We suggest to keep both, keep both because uh, probably you want exactly to compare uh, when uh, the, your intensity are normalized or not normalized and when the match between runs is applied or not. So uh, we are, are highly suggested to do in this way. Um, differently with uh, TMT, you will have a different protein groups like this one, where you will have a reporter intensity corrected, a reporter intensity, a reported intensity count, and then the intensity referred to that one. If you see something like this, it means that uh, you, when you processed in max one, uh, you did the one. Uh, you have uh, uh, you had one experiment uh, that one that here is is labeled as bone marrow, and inside inside it uh, there were eleven plaques. So the eleven plaques are this reporter intensity. Uh, we have a free kind of reporter intensity because uh, uh, the main uh, the the default channels, so the default report intensity are the ones that are uh, just labeled just only as reporter intensity. Reporter and intensity corrected is what it should, there should be some correction, but if you then uh, we, you will upload, uh, you will see that are, there are actually the same or what you will see in reporter intensity. So these two are totally the same. And the reporter intensity count is the count of uh, the channels the, the, that you have. Intensity, bone marrow, this one is the MS1 intensity of your, uh, um, your TMT uh, data set. In this case, we are talking about an MS2 data set. So in the channels, you we have the MS2 quantification, the MS1 uh, uh, quantification is referred to this one, the intensity bone marrow. Now, maybe before to continue, um, before to continue the, to, to do the um, analysis uh, with the SILAC uh, data set, we can reply to some question because we saw that we have many of them. Yeah, one, for example, that we saw, it's about the reference channels in TMT. So the question that I'm talking about is about the reference channel. So um, this attendee asked about uh, um, the, uh, the they say, uh, say that in his data set, in his data set as a reference channel. So uh, this reference channel is the mix of the samples. 
Uh, and when he supplied this new normal gesture, the normal gesture that Sanquan uh, explained last uh, Tuesday, he doesn't see any difference. Um, maybe he did something wrong, maybe uh, so, probably yes. Maybe uh, what I can do is that explain you um, uh, what you need to uh, select in MaxWant. So basically what you have to do is that in the section of group specific parameters, in the section of normalization, you need to, to select the weighted ratio in a way that uh, uh, Max want we select your reference channel and then apply the weighted ratio in all the other channels. But at the same time, you need to say to your uh, to Max want which is the reference channel. That one you have to do that in uh, Max want in the raw data uh, section. And uh, for example, if uh, the reference channel is the 11 11th flex, you will select uh, in a set reference channel uh, 11, just the number 11. So that MaxWant uh, uh, will recognize your reference channel and it will apply the, the normalization after. And uh, then, yes, so then you will see um, the results in the protein in uh, MaxWant output, specifically in the protein groups. And um, However, I would like to say that about this, the reference channel and the, the normalization to apply, the Sanquan apply, uh, Sanquan, uh, also shows uh, a workflow about it. In, uh, so oh. he provides um, a workflow together with the paper. So please follow that one because it's just uh, also, it's a precious analysis. So you can go through that one in such kind of case. So. Uh, I will continue, as I said, the tutorial that uh, uh, Francisca already started. So she showed to you some visualization, the scatter plot, multi scatter plot, and uh, uh, histogram. So I would like uh, to give you more additional information about that. So, for example, for uh, the scatter plot, what you can also do is uh, density estimation. Density estimation, you can you just click on this icon of the density estimation, select the parameter that you want, and then Perseus will calculate it. This persistent estimation, then you can plot in your scatter plot that it will be a density plot. And you can do that in this way. So you generate, again, your scatter plot, you select the density, and it will be colored based on the density estimation. However, now uh, in Perseus, it's also possible to do automatically in the, in the uh, scatter plot. So if I go back to the previous note and I select here in customized plot the density plot, Perseus will generate exactly the same plot, the same uh, density plot. It's a little bit different because uh, the forms, uh, the sites, and the uh, symbol type is different, but uh, yes, the calculation is exactly the same. Um, plus, uh, addition to the, the standard density plot, uh, you, you can also use a density plot based on the condition X, uh, Y, and so on. So this is a new feature that uh, you can use uh, in Perseus. Uh, per so definitely, the, dif uh, the main difference is that here, you will not have automatically generated the density estimation directly in your matrix. So you will, if you want to direct in your ma matrix, you have to do that again as activity density estimation and then plot. Then uh, what I would like also to show you is that thanks to Christoph, we can uh, see better our plots in a better um, visualization like uh, this. Yes. So that you can expand your panel and see better the results uh, that uh, you have in your analysis. Still, uh, you can fit, but also now you can expand and move, drag your um, your panels uh, uh, based on what you would like to, to visualize. And then what you can also do is that go back and put it back in the same location, like as I did right now. Uh, then uh, in the histogram, um, yes, uh, with uh, Francisca, Francisca added the annotation, then she added the annotation based on the Homo sapiens. And what you can also see in the histogram is that you can see the coverage that you have. 
For example, uh, let's say, um, yeah, let's say one, uh, let's take one that is a good coverage, maybe higher. Yes, like this, for example. So in the visualization, in histogram visualization procedures, so you can also uh, visualize the difference between the, uh, uh, the, distrib in the histogram distribution and the histogram distribution that you have with that specific GEO analysis. That here, for example, selected the DNA metabolomic process. Here it works the same, you can uh, fit your data and you can do exactly the same re resolution that uh, I did before. So now uh, we saw some visualization. We did uh, the preparation of the data. We filter, we clean it a little bit before. So uh, what we can do now is that uh, start with uh, statistical analysis. Before to do that, we need to do uh, a normalization of our data. The normalization uh, that we will apply is the subtract that you can find in Perseus under normalization, subtract. Uh, this subtraction we will apply in all rows. You can also define a group. So maybe if you want to apply um, for uh, a group by based on biological replicates or technical re replicates. And, and also you can select if you want to subtract based on mean or median. We will keep median, we keep it as default for uh, uh, such kind of data set, but also what you can do is that play around, uh, around it. Because for example, when you select mean or median, you could see uh, some deep difference. Um, the difference probably is um, depends on how much uh, your data are heterogeneous. So uh, comparing the mean and the median that you calculate here, it will be helpful uh, to see which are the best normal normalization that you should use. Here in this case, I say that we apply the median and now what we need, what uh, we could do is to the test. When we do the test, so we do a comparison, a difference of groups. So before to apply the test, what we need to do is that apply, a, create a, um, an annotation rows. So the categorical annotation rows. This one you already uh, saw together with uh, Francisca. But instead of doing uh, in the same way that Francisca did, what I will do is that uh, not create, but create from experimental name. Because in my case, I have for each sample, the underscore one and two. So I, let's say, I have the numerical that counts the samples that I have. I can use that one so that automatically it will generate my uh, annotation. Here, for I can show you the example that Yes, it, it will take only this cell line and it will remove underscore and the number, so the number of the sample. What you can also do is that create in categorical notation the uh, a template. So what you will do is write a template, it will export the TXT file and you will change in Excel. And then you will change in Excel, save it, and read back in Perseus, selecting read my file. Because maybe you have a matrix that is really big, so your data set is really big. There are so many uh, samples, so it's better to do that in Excel. And uh, plus this same uh, um, uh, configuration, we did it also for the rename. So rename columns, you can do that here manually. But you, what you can also do, do exactly the same what, uh, what you can do in uh, categorical notation rows. So write a template and uh, read from file. It's exactly the same procedure. So for our statistical analysis, we have now our groups. Uh, we have three groups in our notation group, uh, rows. So what we can do is that go under test. And we have uh, several tests that we can select. One sample test, one sample test is the test that you use when you have uh, just uh, only one group, so it means that you have uh, just only one, sample, uh, one uh, cell line, but maybe uh, multiple uh, replicates for the same cell line. Two samples is when you want to compare two groups, multiple, more than two. As, uh, as you saw before, we have three of them, so more than two. So what I will select is multi multiple uh, sample tests. What you need to take care about that is the parameter that you select. 
keep in mind that uh, for this uh, such kind of activity, but for all activity, we always provide a documentation of how you can select uh, this. So you can and you can see the, the documentation. Click on uh, uh, this Pacman Pac logo, and they, it will go directly to the uh, uh, to the test. Uh, for example, here we are using a test, so to the test that uh, you are using. So it's explaining you uh, which kind of location you have, the SO, uh, if you have to select it as zero or not zero, and so on. Uh, now let's go back to the pursue uh, session. So uh, what we need is our groups. We define our categorical notation. Great. We will select uh, a test and we will keep uh, the ANOVA. Uh, S0, we will keep uh, S0, uh, S0, because we want to take care of only about the, um, uh, the p-value. So we don't want to uh, have uh, differences that are affected by the S0. Based on what uh, Jürgen explained you before, the permutation uh, based FDR, we will use uh, the truncation. So, how we, we are going to control uh, our protein, the permutation based FDR. We will select uh, as FDR, uh, let's take uh, for this example 0 0.01, but you can also in this case play around, you can also take uh, S5 and so on. Uh, we want the Q value, so the checkbox is uh, here. We need to, we have to select the checkbox. The, ram the number of randomization are the randomization that are done in background to calculate the permutation based FDR, and we keep uh, SD for 250. And uh, here, this is important uh, uh, regarding the uh, preserved grouping in randomization. This Param uh, parameter you change when you have technical replicas. So let's say that you, in this grouping, you group by the base of biological replicas, but you have also technical re uh, replicas. What you will do is that here select the uh, biological replicas. And before to apply the multiple sample test, it, it, you will create a new one, categor a new categorical uh, annotation test that is based on the technical uh, replicas. And then that one you will select here. We, we no, don't select in this case we, because we don't have any technical replicates and so we will keep as none. Uh, the suffix is when we want to label the results of our test. So what it will be generated by the sample test. We do just one, uh, one test, so we don't need to, to label differently, so we can keep it as empty. Let's press OK. And what we can see as output is that uh, Perseus, uh, the test will uh, generate as categorical uh, column the ANOVA significance, so the significance that are detected from the test, and uh, taking uh, uh, that you can sort it. You saw that clicking on the header of the column, you can sort them. And uh, having taking this ANOVA significance, you can also see the significant level of them. And that one you will check in ANOVA Q values. So the value that they have. This is great. You, you can have the significance, but uh, the problem is that in such kind of, in uh, with this test, uh, you don't know, you do statistical analysis, but uh, you don't know how these proteins are enriched. So you need an additional enrichment analysis. Uh, this is possible to do that, and uh, you can do that. Uh, there are there is not only one way, but uh, now we show you an option that is a feature exact test. And what you will do is that uh, you can take the ANOVA significance. We will use uh, always the uh, truncation. In this case, we don't give uh, as truncation the permutation base because it will be difficult to apply the with just on the only ANOVA significance. So we will keep uh, uh, the, the Benjamin one. And we can press OK. It will take a few minutes. OK. And what you will see is that your uh, significance uh, that uh, you had from, uh, um, from the multiple sample test, the GIO, the reference of the GIO. But what is important is the FDR. You will see the uh, values that are up to 1 and are under to 1. Uh, what does it mean is that, that, that the uh, significance uh, that are up to one means that uh, there are uh, enriched. 
the, one, the others that are under one, it means that they are depleted. So uh, by this way, you can see uh, which are rich and which are not. The problem of this is that, okay, you uh, took your significance, so you see which are rich or not, but you don't know how they are up and down regulated, or you don't know um, uh, from where, how the protein are different, uh, different from one to another one. So uh, what is better to do is better, is better that uh, before to apply such kind of uh, enrichment analysis, you do a clustering of your protein and of the proteins that you have. You can do that in Perseus and you can do that doing uh, taking first your significance. Uh, so I'm going back to the multiple sample tests because we will go see another option of the feature exact test. So I'm going back to that one and I'm taking only the ANOVA significant. And the, what I want to take only the ANOVA significance. What are we, so what are we select here in mode is not removing measures. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. So there are many questions related to median subtraction. So when do you do row subtraction and when do you do column subtraction? And why did you choose row subtraction here? So I used, uh, uh, let me show. So these are, this is the option. There is rows and column as Shivani said. So uh, rows is based on the proteins that you have and columns of the samples that you have. We wanted to uh, normalize them. So if I take only the columns, this means that I normalize the, the, the uh, I, 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 want, I will normalize my uh, sample based on only the column that I have. Okay, so I, it will not so that helpful for such kind of uh, situation. But at the same time, maybe if I take all the matrix, so all the rows, all the process that I have, maybe it will be not uh, uh, helpful to just normalize all together. So that's why when we keep uh, rows, so we, we, we want also, uh, we give also the option to group them. But in this case, uh, because it's a, re a really simple data set, we don't have any technical abilities, we don't uh, group them. Then, yes, so we were here in the sample test uh, and as I said, uh, we want to take only the NOAA significance. You know, so we select here in the filter rows based on categorical column and our significant, and I want to keep them. So what I will do is I keep match rows and select okay. From this one, what I can do is that also, um, we want to see this, uh, let's say, uh, protein, uh, this cluster based on the proteins. So what maybe we can do is that a plan an additional normalization. So what do we call this zeta score? Zeta, zeta score is the kind of normalization that is tell you uh, how far the, your data points is far from a mean or the median in, um, in, that, uh, in that cell lines or uh, in a whole matrix. That cell lines or, or whole matrix it depends on how you select also here exactly in the subtract if you select uh, the groups or not. Uh, how far, I said how far is uh, from the mean, how far the, your data is from the mean, but uh, we can also apply the zeta score uh, with the median. When we apply the median and when we apply the mean. So usually we apply the mean when we already know that your data are uniformly expressed. And uh, when we, but when we know that our data are quite generous, so it's better to use the median. Uh, if you're not sure what uh, you want or what to select, you can uh, just uh, do a test uh, in Perseus. So first run uh, the, your zeta score with the mean uh, and then uh, with the median. If there are differences, it means that um, more the difference is more uh, heterogeneous data is. In this case, we will keep uh, as default one. So and don't select a median. So it means that uh, um, zeta score will calculate with the mean and I press OK. I want to uh, see this uh, cluster based on our protein. So what I can do in Perseus is apply the hierarchical clustering. And uh, I took that, maybe it's better to show, under visualization, uh, no, sorry, here, this one. 
hierarchical clustering. Uh, you will see many par uh, parameters that you needed to select. What do you need to take care about here in order to have a, a standard hierarchical clustering is so which kind of dist distance you are selecting and uh, but most important uh, how which uh, uh, samples or uh, PCOs has to take for your analysis. Uh, PCOs uh, usually take the main columns. So our main columns in our sample are the uh, in, in our data are the samples, so they are automatic here, but uh, you can go back and select a few of them. In this case, we need all of them, so we take all of them. And another uh, thing that you need to take, uh, take into account is the distance. Here we select Euclidean, but you have also other possible distance. Uh, and uh, yes, you can use them, but uh, based on my experience is that uh, don't, um, um, don't uh, let's say you can play around this, but this one you can play when uh, you have a data set that are really different, so there are heterogeneous. So don't expect that this distance, if you change the distance, the hierarchical class will change so that much. So the normalization probably will change it, but uh, not uh, the distance that is selected here under the hierarchical clustering. So I select my samples, I keep everything as it is for columns and rows, and I press OK. Um, Perseus will generate the hierarchy clustering, and you will see the main columns that you select that are here, and then your proteins here, because you have so that many, you can see uh, the specific proteins, but if you can just press like this, on this section, it will zoom in and it will show you data. You can change the label. So let's say, let's zoom. If I press here, configure row names, I can just give to it just only the gene name. And there it is. So it will be a little bit clean. But it's also true that if I select only gene names, gene names is not a, a unique parameter. So maybe what I will see is that many trim tw uh, 28. So keep in mind how you will label uh, this one. At the same time, I can also um, label the columns based on the, uh, um, the cell line that I have. And uh, I can do that with the column color bar. And I can do that with the grouping that I did before. So if I selected this, I will see the groups that I selected before. I can zoom in, I can zoom out. Great, I can change the colors as I want. That is great. So as I said, we wanted the class in our proteins. So what we, we are go, how, how we can do, uh, we can do that, that is that uh, we select here in the final row cluster, we click on this one and we select uh, how many uh, cluster we expect to use. We Let's say we select for now these five of them and the persist will automatically, based on the expression, the protein expression, it will group by your protein, based, um, it will group by the protein and it will generate the five cluster. Together with the colors that you will find in your uh, hierarchical clustering, you will see also the uh, cluster here on the right. And together with them, the profile plot generated by that one. So we are uh, using the hierarchical clustering, we generate our cluster that we need for our Fisher exact test. But we need to take this cluster that are uh, here defined, that are called here, and put it back to our uh, uh, multi uh, the output for, uh, the, from the multiple sample test, and then run again the Fisher exact test. This is possible to do that in Perseo. So, first, we need to export this row cluster. And we will see here as category column the cluster that we have. And then what we can do is uh, do what is called the match rows by name, matching rows by name here in multiprocessing. 
and select the base matrix, so the matrix that we want just to clone in per so that is for us uh, our sample test because we need as main matrix that one and add to that one the cluster. So as basic, we will have matrix uh, 17. And the other matrix, we will uh, take uh, this uh, matrix generated from the, um, um, the cluster that we export. So here matrix 21, uh, great, and I can press OK. So here, I've, here we need to be careful of how we match these uh, columns. Uh, or we match definitely with the Uniplot because they are unique. So we don't have uh, the kind of situation where maybe uh, in the table one we have a protein that uh, we have um, two or more uh, protein that are labeled with the same name. So it will not match correctly. But with the Uniplot, we don't have such kind of cases. So we keep as Uniplot. And here below, we can uh, select what we need from the other matrix. In our case, we need the clusters. So what I will take. Here, cluster. And uh, I will move here on the right and press OK. And now I have in my, uh, in my test my cluster. Now I can use uh, again the uh, Fisher exact test under annotation columns. And this time, instead of taking the more significant that I already filtered before to do uh, the hierarchical classing, I will take directly the cluster. I will keep all the rest the same. And finally, uh, with the up to up to from the Fisher exact test. Okay, I will see again the FDR where the comp set is the same, but finally I can see uh, from which cluster are from. So the, the, here I have the number and I can refer to the hierarchy clustering that I did before. So in this way, I, have, I did the enrichment analysis and together with that, I can also see the protein clustering. So uh, my significance are grouped by based on the protein cluster that I identified with the previous analysis with the hierarchical clustering. This is one way of the enrichment analysis. Another way of the enrichment analysis is what we call the PCA. And we can do that taking uh, the results from the multiple sample test in a way not, not to have a mess, let's clone it, so this one. And what we can do is that under clustering, press principal component analysis, we want the enrichment, so we select uh, the checkbox and press OK. Ah, yes, sorry, because we didn't filter them. So we should add some filter of this. Probably after. So we should filter them. So maybe let's apply a minimum filter based on we have uh, nine samples, let's take as minimum nine. And then let's generate the PCA. And yes, so sometimes uh, you could have such kind of situation where you have um, more value values. So what you need to do is that additional uh, uh, filtering. I did, uh, you saw this minimum filtering as nine that are based on the samples that I have. I have uh, three cell lines and in each cell lines I have three samples, so three, three, nine. Uh, in a way, not apply like uh, the filter that uh, Francisca applied uh, regarding the valid uh, upper percentage, uh, like 70% uh, uh, again, because okay, that is good to clean your data, but uh, probably it's not, it's not good to clean too much. So we, we can filter, but let's keep it as minimum, minimum as possible. Uh, our PCA is generated. And what we can see is that uh, the components, so what you will see is that uh, your components, that you can see that is really great because it uh, creates a free cluster, free cluster that are based on your, can uh, your cancer cell lines. But uh, what you can also see is that uh, how these uh, clusters are driven, so which protein are driven, this cluster, the other cluster, and the other one. 
You can see that here below, we're selecting with the, uh, with the rectangular, but let's say the freehand for now, for example. You can see I'm selecting this one, so I would like to say the protein just are driven this cluster. I can see through this one, through this section. The protein, but at the same time, what I can also see here, I have my proteins, the uniprot, but I can also see the geo. So where uh, um, each protein uh, are refer, let's see, each protein is referred to a specific geo, and here I can see uh, all the details. Then this is uh, the uh, second option of the uh, enrich enrichment analysis that you can do in Perseus. But let me say also another thing. Uh, so at the beginning, we used uh, multi-sample tests. So this one, because I said that uh, we, in our categorical notation, we have three groups. Uh, it's true, we have three groups. So one possibility is uh, use the multiple sample test. But what we, you can also do is that a test based on pairs. So I have uh, three groups. I can, say, I can compare the first one with the second one, the first one with the third one, and so on. It's possible to do that. And there are two ways to do that. Uh, on the automatic one will be selecting the volcano plot, the icon that you can find here, select the cell lines that you want to compare here, press OK. And it will generate your volcano plot. And here you can also uh, change your FDR here as default it's one. That's zero and FDR. And uh, yes, it will, it will generate uh, the significance for your volcano, volcano plot. But also what you can do is uh, this one, you can also do that again with the uh, test. And because you want to do that in pairs, so between two samples, so what you can select is two sample tests in this case. You will select again the two cancer cell lines that you want. Press OK. And then what you have to do is that take your matrix and do the scatter plot. Plot um, the difference in your p-value. Oh, sorry, I put it in the opposite. And you will have the exactly same book count plot that you had before. The difference is that now, if you want to change the S0 of the FDR, you have to process, you have to do that again in your uh, two sample tests. Uh, but at the same time, uh, with this uh, such, uh, in, with this process, procedure, what you can do is that uh, use again uh, your the density plot, what I show you at the beginning so that it will show your Vulcan plot based on uh, the density estimation too. To. This is, could be good because maybe you can see some uh, noise distortion of uh, your data could happen. So it's great to use uh, also in this way. It's possible to integrate this density plot in the Vulcan plot. And uh, yes, we should work on this one. We should work also on the better visualization that one. So probably it will be a um, next uh, feature that we can add in Perseus. And uh, that's it for, uh, for uh, this analysis, this tutorial better. Thank you.